16 medical school interviews, and 10 medical school acceptances. Hi everyone, it's Taya. Welcome to my channel where you'll learn the best tips and tricks on studying, productivity, and organization. So today I'm gonna go over the personal statement that got me 16 medical school interviews and 10 medical school acceptances. Honestly y'all, I can't believe I got in. I'm so happy and honestly just so blessed with all these acceptances and just the opportunity to go to medical school. Writing the personal statement was honestly one of the hardest parts of the application cycle. I didn't realize how much digging I needed to do within all of my experiences as a pre-med and even earlier in life in order to come up with a really coherent application that shared my passion for medicine and kind of what I wanted to do in the future. One thing that really helped me while writing my personal statement was going online and watching other people on YouTube or TikTok read their personal statement and also reading other people's personal statements online. So I definitely want to share my personal statement with you all in hopes that it will help you while you're going through and writing your personal statement for medical school. I'm also going to include some tips at the end of this video. So if you're having a hard time getting started or revising your personal statement, make sure to stick around for that. And if you haven't already, make sure to like this video, share it, and subscribe to my channel. So without further ado, let's get started. In what seemed like the blink of an eye, my sister's neuromyelitis optica took a turn for the worse. We went from Sunday dinners at home to daily hospital visits. As a teenager, it felt cruel to have everything seemingly ripped away, but my hope was slowly restored by her physicians as they treated us like their own family. They included my family in every round, providing us with peace of mind about her condition and progress. Most importantly, they found ways to relate to my sister by always asking about our family and her children. The physicians made me feel like she was more than just a patient in room 437. She was redacted. The initially intimidating hospital became our home, allowing me to witness the commitment and genuine empathy that physicians can extend to their patients. During my sister's hospital visits, I clung to every word regarding her lab results and plan of care. I then spent the rest of the day researching every medical term that I wrote down to better explain the treatments and test results to my family. Through this chase to learn more from my family, I recognized medicine as an arena of continual learning. It was this experience that sparked my interest in the medical field. I wanted to take this endless medical knowledge and deliver it to patients in a way that made them feel included and confident in their care, just as my sister's physicians did for her. To expand and apply this knowledge, I decided to work as a certified nursing assistant at a local nursing home. Here, I met Mrs. Clark, a new resident on the long-term ward with severe anxiety that seemed to rise in the presence of doctors. On a day when she was inconsolable, I noticed a picture of her grandkids on the windowsill. After I commented on how happy they looked in the picture, her stress faded almost instantly and she started to smile. From that day on, Miss Clark and I would sit and talk about her grandkids whenever she got anxious. In those moments, I understood the importance of learning the nuances of each patient to give them the care that best suits their needs. Taking that extra second to mention something small yet significant meant that patients like Mrs. Clark could re receive the best quality of care. This experience gave me a glimpse of improving patient outcomes as a physician through compassionate care. I was further motivated in my pursuit of medicine through my experience with hospitalized patients as a patient care technician. I worked with patients from marginalized and underserved communities, which revealed the effects of the lack of diversity in the medical field. Mr. Bill was a minority patient recovering from surgery, but he was fighting to be released. He expressed that the pain he was feeling had been reduced to complaining by his doctors. Ultimately, he felt ignored because none of his physicians believed in his intense pain. As a black woman, I learned that my pain and sadness had to be expressed in a certain way or it would be labeled as anger or worse, complaining. My attempts to follow these rules often left me feeling like Mr. Bill, so I took this opportunity to listen to his concerns and relay them to the rest of his care team. I understood the stress marginalized communities felt when seeking medical care, but it was eye-opening to witness the effects from the perspective of a healthcare provider. I realized that as a physician, I could have a greater impact on my patient's experience with medicine. This exposure solidified my aspirations of becoming a physician and pushed me to help the efforts in bringing marginalized communities equal and representative care. 
My attempts to bridge this gap took many forms. I started with a vow to be more aware of my patient's needs and concerns so that everyone's voice was heard. During my rounds, I conversed with patients to better understand the care they required. When working on the med surge unit, I learned that one of my patients was experiencing back pain post-surgery. Together we found that warm blankets and pillows were enough to relieve the pain. Though it was a small task, I afforded her peace in knowing someone was listening to her needs. Eventually, I branched into using YouTube as an outlet to help underserved students by sharing my experience as a pre-medical student. I saw the potential for exposing more minority students to the medical field by using accessible and free resources and how it could help close the gap in healthcare and society. My journey to medicine started as a starstruck teenager in my sister's hospital room, but my experiences have continually reinforced my passion for the medical field. My interactions with patients like Mrs. Clark and Mr. Bill allowed me to foster the same sense of family that my sister experienced, while also uncovering an interest in health disparities. Maya Angelou once said, do the best you can until you know better. Then, when you know better, do better. Similarly, I have used the lessons from every class, patient encounter and extracurricular to cultivate compassion, awareness, and a thirst for knowledge. As a physician, I hope to do better by using all that I have learned and will learn to help bring equity and patient-centered care to the forefront of medicine. So that's my medical school personal statement. And it's honestly so weird going back and rereading it, thinking about all the stress that I went through to get to this draft. It was a week before I was about to submit my primary application when I had one more person read through my personal statement and they ripped it up. So I went from my final draft to the one that I just read to you. And honestly, if the person who ripped my statement up is watching this, thank you so much. Obviously you did something that helped me get into medical school. <laughs> So tips for your medical school personal statement. If you're having trouble getting started, the first thing you should do is find a way to relax yourself. I struggled so hard with just getting words on my document because I was so worried that nothing sounded right. So take the time and put yourself in a relaxing environment and just let the words flow. Don't think about how anything sounds. Don't try to put it together in some coherent ma manner. Just write. Think about that initial event that started you on the path to medicine. Think about all of the experiences you've had in college that have helped reaffirm your passion for medicine. And also try to think about that big idea of what you wanna do in medicine in the long run. So for me, I talk specifically about health disparities and how I wanna make a difference in that realm. So maybe you have something of that nature or something in a completely different field that you would like to accomplish. So when it comes to people reviewing your personal statement, I think you should have two separate lists of people. On one side, you definitely wanna to send to family and friends and make sure your personal statement represents who you are as a person and shows a lot about what you've done in this journey to medicine. On the other side of things, you wanna have people that are really good at writing, grammar, and also someone who might have already been through the medical school process. Personally, I didn't have anyone who had been through the medical school process, so I felt like I was really alone when trying to find someone who could help me revise my statement. If you're also in this position, I recommend using fiverr.com. You can go on and search medical school personal statement and it'll bring you a list of a ton of people who are probably accepted medical school students or people who are just great with writing statements. Another big tip is to go on the AAMC website and look at their list of core medical school competencies. So this is a list of competencies that medical schools are looking for in their applicants. You wanna make sure that every story or example that you use in your personal statement somehow reflects some of the competencies on the page. I got this advice from someone while writing my statement and I think it really changed the game for me. I was able to sit down, narrow down my list of experiences and pick the stories that best reflected who I was and why it would make me a great medical student. So that's all for this video. If you are still confused about writing your personal statement or just want someone to look over it, please feel free to message me on any of my social media platforms. And also, if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments because it might be something that somebody else is confused about as well. Make sure you have the notifications on for my channel because I'm going to be uploading a video going over my entire AMCAS application. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. See you next time.